ISA 570 going concern. Guys, just note it is the revised standard. It was revised in 2016, but they still refer to it as being revised. So if you have a previous version which does not have the revised um, word, then you have the old going concern standard. Okay, so we're going to understand what the going concern assumption is, guys, but you should be very comfortable with this. This is done in FAC, and this is the principle that we, you base your financials upon when recording all your balances and transactions. When should financial statement be prepared on the going concern assumption? Again, this is everything that you cover in FAC. And then we're going to look at some of the risks and common questions around the going concern. So, first of all, understanding this going concern assumption. It is an assumption which is ultimately like an estimate, which means there is not necessarily a definite answer that the entity will continue its operations in the foreseeable future. So we believe that they will be able to continue for the next 12 months. That is what the foreseeable future is considered to be. And so they need to estimate at the end of the year when they are preparing their financials whether they think they will be able to continue for the next 12 months. And if they have doubts because of maybe the industry taking a turn for the negative or maybe they know that they don't have money coming in, then they need to be very careful when they decide to prepare their financials on the going concern basis. Okay, so I've just said, yeah, an assumption means there is uncertainty and something you guys should be comfortable with because it is discussed in IAS 1 is a material uncertainty. And that is where the potential impact of an event or condition may cast doubt on the entity's ability to continue. So what we're saying is there's an assumption about the going concern and assumption brings about uncertainty. But that's standard because there's assumptions involved. However, if that assumption has a material uncertainty, which means there is a very big concern about whether they will be able to continue, then they've got to really consider if they should be preparing it on the going concern basis or not. So when should they be prepared on the going concern basis? Well, if they general purpose financials, and management don't at that, this point have an intention to liquidate, they don't intend to cease operations, or where there's no real reason why they don't believe they aren't a going concern. Okay, so this is me speaking in the opposite to what I've written here. We, what I've written is they prepare it on the going concern basis unless they're going to liquidate or cease operations or there's no realistic alternative to do so. But what happens if there is a material uncertainty? Remember we said that is where there is the potential impact of an event to affect the going concern. So then what happens in this case? Well, they're going to have to analyze this and decide whether they still are a going concern, but that they should be disclosing this or whether they actually shouldn't be a going concern. That's what they need to analyze. The obvious answer is that they are going to prepare it on the going concern basis, but just disclose that there's a material uncertainty. So what are the risks? First risk is the going concern principle is applicable. So they are a going concern, but there may be uncertainties about the entity's ability to continue as a going concern. 
and these may not be disclosed adequately or at all. So we just said above, if there is material uncertainty, they should be disclosing it. So in this case, they are a growing concern. They should disclose the material uncertainties, but they either don't at all, or they under disclose. So they don't actually give all the information necessary about that material uncertainty. Okay, big concern. Second risk is that it's not applicable. So they shouldn't prepare the financial statements on the going concern assumption. But they are prepared on the going concern basis. So what do we know right away here? There is a material misstatement. Because they aren't a growing concern and they therefore can't be expressing their financials according to the growing concern basis. Well, finally, there's a risk that management won't perform an assessment on the entity's ability to continue. And what do we know? We need the assessment. We as auditors need their assessment. to do ours, or to see if we believe that they are a going concern. So if they don't give it to us, we've got a limitation of scope. And that limitation may be significant for us to say, mm, I can't do going concern assessments if you don't give me your own assessments. So, the common questions. We need to evaluate whether going concern assumption is appropriate. That's a nice easy one. So, we are going to have to, number one, look for indicators that they may not be a going concern or indicators that cast doubt on whether they are a going concern. So anything that makes me believe that, mm, I don't know if they're going to be able to continue in the foreseeable future based on this information. So this would be some negative things. But then I also need to look for indicators that they may be able to continue. And so these would be some positive things that make me think that they could actually continue. Like maybe a holding company said, listen, you know, we will help you with some finance. We'll get you out of uh, your, your negative scenario. Or maybe they are entering into big contracts with new customers and that's going to turn around the whole business. So I've got to look for positives and negatives, guys. And here's a big problem. Often you guys only see the negatives. You have to look out for those positives. Because there will always be some sort of indication. And guys, sometimes those positives seem so far-fetched. And that's why you ignore them. It doesn't matter. You need to at least put them down and then ultimately conclude. Yes, I think they are or no, they definitely aren't based on the negatives being outweighed or outweighing the positives. Second type of question, provide examples as to what management can do to improve the financial position and the profitability. So here you need to give some potential ways that a business can get out of a sticky situation. And guys, these 
you can think up yourself. You can use the information in the question because there might be information there, like the fact that you can see they're part of a group. Then you need to, oh, maybe the people in the group can help them or some of their related parties can help them. But you need to think up your own logical ways in which a company could try to get out of a negative situation. And this is things like, how could they improve cash flow? How can they improve profitability? How can they improve management of the assets? How can they improve management of the liabilities, which would be more so um, important? Okay, and guys, the standard can help you with some ways, but there's going to be situations where you're going to have to just think basically from the information in the scenario. Okay, third type of question. Describe the substantive order procedures you would perform to test the appropriateness of the going concern assumption. So here is where management have made a calculation or management have an assumption. that they've used to get to this assumption. Maybe not necessarily a calculation, but maybe more a report where they indicate why they believe that they can continue. And now you have to audit whether you are comfortable with that report. And so you've got to think of ways in which you can test to see if they will be able to continue in the foreseeable future. Okay, so it's important here that this is all going to be based on assumptions about the 12-month future. So I'm going to have to try and get any kind of evidence to back these assumptions or to disprove these assumptions to show that they aren't actually going to be a going concern. And then finally, discussing the impact of the use of the going concern assumption on the auditor's report and the actions to be taken by the auditor. So they have now prepared it according to the going concern assumption and maybe there's material uncertainties, maybe they shouldn't be, and what, do we, what kind of opinion do we give as a result of them preparing it on the going concern assumption? Or maybe they should be and it's cool. And so this is the audit reports I would give as a result. Okay, so let's look at the first one, where we evaluate the going concern assumption.